Hey, my fellow Belmonts, welcome back to Alan Wake. Whoop, mouse is going all crazy again. All right. Hey, Randy's dogs. Hmm. I want to have some Randy's dogs. They look so yummy. Is he okay? He's walking like he's got a limp. It gets better. A local girl, Barbara Jagger, drowned in Cauldron Lake just a week earlier. They were lovers. Barbara Jagger? Sure, Jagger's a local spook story. The scratching hag comes for you in the dark. Childish stuff like that. You mean anyway, her? Anyway, Al, I'm just getting to the best part. All of the articles about this stuff were written by Cynthia Weaver. I asked around, and she's that crazy bag lady you met. Her? The lamp lady? She can be a little <coughs> loopy, but she's not homeless or anything. Yeah, anyway, <coughs> she knew both Jagger and Zane before they both died, and she had some kind of a breakdown. Oh, no wonder why she was crazy. This must be our home. This is our home. Or, Barry, there you are. Uh, this is our home. I can tell. So the oh, mister. This here's Rose's trailer. You mind me asking what you want with her? We're just here to talk to her, pal. Yeah, just only talk to her. So that crazy veil lady is Barbara, huh? And something about Thomas Zane. Who is this guy? Welcome to... to... Oh dear. Mr. Wake. I'm... I'm so glad you're here. Rose, you have my manuscript? Oh. Oh yes. Yes. Please, come in. I don't trust her. Uh, 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 uh. Grab the flashlight. <sighs> hey, this is really good. Rose. Yes. My manuscript. I really need it. I understand. I know what you need. A muse to inspire you. Oh, for Barry. She doesn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, hey, Al. Al, what's... Oh. Barry! What? What? Skin. I'm too weak to stop it. You must turn the lights on. I promised I'd come visit you and your lovely wife. You must finish what you started. I insist. You must turn the lights on. How long was I out? I felt nauseous, hung over. Only anger kept me going. I can't tell reality from dream anymore, but it seems I have an imaginary editor to help me. She's an old woman in a funeral dress. I call her Barbara Jagger. She's very strict. I I'm writing faster and faster. My manuscript is being heavily revised. The edits are getting very aggressive, and each day there's less of me and more of her. I hate it, but I know she's right. What? She promises me I can save Alice this way. She knows more of this than I do. About the complex incantation I'm attempting. About this place. She's worked with another writer under similar circumstances, Thomas Zane. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I'm getting close. I can feel it. Hmm. Uh-oh. Rose took a day for me. I had less than 12 hours left to meet the kidnapper. All I could do was get Barry into the car, work something out once I got on the road. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. What can I get you today? Coffee? I couldn't work up much hate for Rose. Something had used her to get to me and left its mark. Yep. First refill is free. Milk and sugar on the counter there. 
Would you like to hear today's specials? Thank you. A nice day. Come back soon. I'll leave her alone. Barry was out of it. He was way too heavy to carry. Of course he was. And of course he's snoring. Right. I deserve more money. I'm so handsome. Nah, <sighs> you're a loner, Barry. My gun and flashlight were gone. I'd have to find a way to get Barry into the car as quickly as possible. There was no time to waste. Mr. Randolph liked Rose. That little smile she had. How she was still sweet when life had tried so hard to make her bitter. It wasn't any of his business what she did in her trailer. But those strangers, the writer and his smart-ass sidekick, looked like trouble. And they'd been in there for hours, way past her normal bedtime. He reached for the phone and called the sheriff's station. Uh-oh. Call the police on me. That ain't good. Um... Oh, radio. Uh, turn it on. I just stepped outside to catch a breath of fresh air. Let me tell you, the weather's getting heavy. Nights like this make me especially glad I'm here talking to you and not home in bed. Once, once the weather takes a turn like this, I can't sleep at all. It's all tangled bed sheets and dark thoughts, punctuated by the occasional plunge into nightmare. <laughs> is it just me? Well, perhaps it is. But I hope I can make the night a little bit easier to get through. Caller, you're on KBF FM. Hey, hi, it's Walt Snyder. What's on your mind, Walt? Well, I ain't the way you are, but, well, uh, I can't sleep either, you know? Uh, I've just been staring out the window here, trying to make sense of it all, but, uh, I ain't been drinking either, you know? I just... Well, you sound like a man with a problem, Walt. the local drunk from the jail? Hey, they're our thermostat. I'm just really scared there's gonna be enemies. And I have no way to defend myself. Yep. God, he's tired out so quick. You need to wake up, Alan. Uh-oh. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh, you're gonna get it now. God knows what you've done to that poor girl. This is Agent Nightingale, FBI! Get him up, Hemingway! You're under arrest! You move a muscle, I'll unload right in your goddamn face! Stay right where you are, Nicole! Shit, I gotta escape the feds. That ain't good. <clears throat> Man, 
I just wish the sprint button was more longer than this. Bad shots, I gotta admit. <clears throat> they got really bad shots. Did I escape? I hope I did. Is that manuscript? Nope. I thought it was. It looks like it. Ah, oh, there's a manuscript. For decades, the darkness that wore Barbara Jagger's skin slept fitfully in the dark place that was its home and prison. It was hungry and in pain. It dreamed of its nights of glory when the poet's writing had called it from the depths and given it a brief, terrible taste of power and freedom. The rock stars had stirred it from the deep sleep the poet had sunk it back to in the end. When it sensed the writer on the ferry, it opened its eyes. So, she's the darkness. All right, that makes sense. Oh no! Here comes the darkness. Or the taken. She's looking out for me. <clears throat> oh, wait. There's more talking. I don't have a gun. What the fuck are you talking about? <sighs> How about I eluded the police? Safe haven. Over here. Well, <sighs> well, they're 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 dead. This horror was everywhere I went, circling me. The cops didn't stand a chance. They were after a writer, not a monster. Like I said, I like the sheriff. Maybe. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need to find a gun. Huh, 
crow saved my life. What the hell's going on? Whoa. Uh oh. That ain't good. What just happened? Whoa. Alright, is there anything in here I can use? Pick up the coffee firmus and the radio. Got Wheeler. This ain't good. I could see the lights at the radio station in the distance. I think I should go to the radio station there. I think I'm playing Firewatch. Even though I don't like the game, I still know what it is. I imagined that the broadcast tower in the distance was part of the local radio station. Maine seemed like a decent guy. Perhaps he could give me directions to the coal mine. Alright. Also, I need a gun, and I need a flashlight. Uh, a natural shadow has clung to the gate. The darkness that was after me was trying to stop me. I wouldn't get through without the light. I need the light. There was no power to the searchlight. Ah, oh, fuck. I knew this was too easy. It wasn't gonna be this easy. Is this where I checked I don't get a gun at all? That'd be cool. It's <clears throat> a lot of sparks. There goes the searchlight. I wonder what the darkness will want with me, anyways. I want to build more manuscripts, that's the thing. It's another one of those darkness. I found a flashlight. There you go. Hey, finally, a flashlight. It took me a moment to recognize the flashbang grenades. They were an ideal weapon for my situation. All right, we got flashbangs. I think they're dead. They're dead. Alright, we got flashbangs. Probably the best weapon in my opinion. Yep, there you go. Destroys the darkness instantly.
That was a mess. There you go. Oh no, the police has been taken. That ain't good. Yep. I need to get out of here. I got one flashbang left. Here. There you go. Can I get in there? I need to get in there. Oh, more flashbangs. Cool. I'll take those. Take some batteries. There's a radio. What's on your mind, Mill? Well, I live near the trailer park, Pat, and there's a big ruckus going on over there. Well, that's just up the road from me, too. Uh, what's going on, do you know? I don't know, but there's a bunch of police cars there, lots of sirens, a helicopter buzzing around, and I think I heard some gunshots. Gunshots? Yes, sir, like from a pistol. So can you find out what's going on? Because it's just next door and they're popping off guns there. They're still shooting? No, it was maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. It sounds serious, Pat. I'm telling you, it don't sound like no party. Well, I, I'm certainly going to give the station a call, Milt. Okay. You'll hear it here as soon as I hear from them. Okay, thanks. Well, looks like we disturbed the local neighbors. Part of my plan all along. I go, I'm dead. Try that again. Oh, wait, there you go. I didn't know you can do direct contact. That's pretty interesting. I know you've got two left. I saw you. There you go. <coughs> Man, I have nothing to talk talk about today. I'm sorry. It's early in the it's like. I just got up and trying to get up. Oh, jeez. You know, I only got one flashbang left. Fine. In here. Oh, good, some flares. I might need them just in case. Use these flares to, um, make these guys back up. Oh, ow. Ow. Don't have flashbangs. You better. I don't have a gun. Ooh. 
Who oh, that was close. It's a radio I hope station. Man could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. Oh, pick up a uh, thermostat. Thank you. I think I want an interview. Come on in, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. No way to run now, Jim Brown. You got away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. Go again. I'll get you yet, even if it kills me. You hear me? You hear me, AP Lovecraft? Cthulhu? Oh, falling off shit. so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. Fine with me. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. <laughs> what a dumb, dumb federal agent. Like, seriously? <clears throat> What's the matter with him? I digress. I need them to back off. <sighs> oh, gun, gun! Ow. Got a gun. Oh, thank God. Finally, a gun. And that was a light. Whoop dee. Whoop dee doo. I'm sorry I wasn't even talkative today. Woke up and I'm out of it, you know. People walking like out the hallway making me nervous. This is what you get for recording on Friday the 13th, huh? Why <sighs> don't you come back? I'm gonna find a police. We gotta get out of the police or something like that. I don't know. Until then, we'll see you next time. Later.